you stand for the reading of your of the word, if you would. Mark chapter three. Thank you for being in God's house and taking time to worship him and praise him. This is an important night. It's an important night because it's important that we know the direction that God is leading the church. Um, You make up the church. And it's important that you know where you're going. And... um, So it's important that you're here tonight, and I thank you for making that a priority. And we're going to be unveiling our vision for 2020. And uh, I think it's important that when God lays something into our heart and into our spirit, that we're all on the same page, going in the same direction. And... um, I believe that God spoke, um, been praying about uh, this for months, actually. And uh, a number of months ago, God uh, started speaking into my spirit about where he was leading us in 2020. My wife was praying. God was speaking to her. And uh, we spoke about it together. And um, I went off to Urshan Graduate for one of my courses, and I was uh, I spoke to a, a good friend of mine there, Brother Bland. He was there um, for one of the courses. He was there lecturing that day, part of it. And uh, we got talking about the church, faith, uh, uh, the sanctuary that he pastors in St. Louis. And as our conversation continued, oh, God confirmed to me what he was speaking into my spirit. And I share that with you tonight. Amen. Mark chapter 3, just a simple verse. And um, the setting of this verse is speaking about a divided kingdom. And uh, they're accusing the Lord of being of the devil and all kinds of stuff. And uh, he, he, he speaks this verse that will be our key verse for this, for this vision sermon. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. If a house be divided against itself, it cannot stand. What is being implied there is obviously the opposite. If a house is unified, then it will stand. If a house is together, together. It will stand. As everyone is standing, we're going to unveil our banner, Brother Robertson, so everyone maybe can see it. This is our banner for 2020. Brother Robertson. The Bible speaks about a house that is divided against itself. It cannot stand. But we will stand together. Ah, we will stand together. I want to give a big thank you to Dale and Jasmina, who created our banner. If you were able to get your picture taken in the back hallway, you'll be able to come up after church and find your picture on there. Because you are part of being together. 
I'm hoping that if you didn't get your picture taken, that you're still with us. You're still part of being together. In case some people's hair wasn't quite right or something. Right, Miranda? No. But you're still part of it. You're together. Together. They did a fabulous job of putting it together. If a house be divided against itself, the house... Cannot stand. But let me tell you, if we are together, there is no telling what will happen in 2020. Hallelujah. God, I thank you for the power and the authority of your word tonight. I thank you, Lord, for this church. I thank you, God, for every member, every person God of this church, every person that attends this church, Lord, the ones that watch online, God, the ones that are parts of our daughter works, our satellite churches, I thank you, Lord, for each and every one of them tonight. And, God, I pray that this, God, this message that you placed into my spirit about being together, God, that it would be something, God, that we would hold on to for this year. And something powerful, God, would happen in our midst. God, as your mighty name is glorified and your spirit, hallelujah, leads us and guides us. I ask it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be seated. When you... Look up the word together. It speaks about being into or in relationship, an association, or an agreement where two or more people are part of an agreement on something. Or you're into or you're in a condition of unity, compactness, or coherence where you... And someone else, at least two, agree that something is going to happen. The Bible says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Uh, it's, it's, it's a a powerful understanding that if two of you shall agree on earth uh, as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. There's something powerful about being together. Together. Uh, I I have a a couple pictures I want to show you. The first one. Uh, is, is speaking about a story about a U.S. jet fighter pilot in Vietnam. And his name was Charles Plum. He had completed 75 combat missions when he was shot down. Plum was ejected and parachuted into enemy hands where he spent six years in a Vietnamese prison. One day, a man came up to him and said, You're Plum? You flew jet fighters in Vietnam from the aircraft carrier Kitty Hawk? You were shot down? Plum was confused, and he asked how the man knew about that. And the man replied, I packed your parachute. I was the man who packed your parachute. The man then shook his hand and said, I guess it worked. (laughs) Plum assured him that it had and said, if your shoot hadn't worked, I wouldn't be here today. Plum thought a lot about that man who held the fate of someone he didn't even know. He held the fate in his hands. He kept pondering how many times He might have seen the guy and not even said anything. He was a fighter pilot and and the stranger was a sailor. Charles Plum now uh, is a motivational speaker telling his story to hundreds. And after he tells his story, he always asks his audience, uh, who's packing your parachute? Because that's an important thing. 
See, in our life, in our personal work, in our Christian walk, uh, you, you and I, we need each other. We're in this together. Somebody's packing my parachute. I don't like even jumping. You're packing my parachute, you better pack it good. I mean, it better be working properly. But we're in this together. We're walking this road together. We're not in this alone. If you're feeling like you're alone, that is not the will of God. We are in this together. Let us stand together. Because if we stand together, the house will stand. It's not an abnormal thing. When people get in conflict... When people get in conflict, it causes things to happen that doesn't work well. You say, well, I I don't know everybody the same way. Doesn't change the fact that we're in it together. These two men didn't even know each other. But one was back in the other man's parachute. And that was an important thing when it came to him being shot down. The second picture I have is a Kenyan runner. This Kenyan runner gave water to a Chinese runner. You'll notice the runner has no hands. This runner was very dehydrated. But the woman from Kenya ran alongside and made sure that this Chinese runner Got something to drink. What was interesting about it is the Kenyan runner, when she stopped to do this, slowed down to do it, she had been in first place. And what she did caused her to lose the race. And she came in second. It doesn't seem like a huge thing. Maybe to us, and we don't know either person. But I can guarantee you to the one that was running alongside, it was life or death. It meant everything. And they went along together. Together. They didn't even know each other that we know of. But they went and did it together. They were competitors, but they did it together. They were from different countries, but they did it together. They were after the same prize, but the prize was not what mattered the most. What mattered the most is they did it together. Together, the house will stand. Together, it will survive. Together you will make it. Together you can do it. Together you will overcome. Together you will be successful. Together you will get to where God's wanting you to go. I added this. I didn't put up the pictures of it. But I'm always amazed at how awesome this is. Draft horses. They're very large, muscular animals. Throughout history, they've been used for pulling great, great loads, moving very heavy objects. A single draft horse can pull a load of 8,000 pounds, 4 ton. The strength involved in this is its hard to imagine. 8,000 pounds. So then we could speculate what would happen if we hooked up two draft horses to a load. Our instant thoughts would be that the two draft horses could pull 16,000 pounds. If one draft horse could pull 8,000, we would automatically assume that two could pull 16,000 pounds. 
But the facts are that two draft horses pulling together cannot just pull twice as much as one. They actually pull three times as much. Two draft horses that can each pull 8,000 pounds alone can pull 24,000 pounds together. Two horses that have never worked together. Not even necessarily from the same farm, don't know each other, can be hooked up and instantaneously those two draft horses can haul 24,000 pounds together. The horses teaches a very clear lesson in teamwork. But they even have more to teach us. See, if the two horses that are pulling together have trained with one another and have worked together before, they not only can pull three times as much, but they actually can pull four times as much. If they have been working together, not only can they pull 8,000 pounds apiece, but they can pull 32,000 pounds together. It's mind-boggling. Just the basis of two horses. <laughs> horses. I don't know how they communicate. He -haw. I don't know how they do all. Like, I don't know. They, they respond to he and ha and Right and left, he and all. I mean, there was, but 32,000 pounds because they have been taught to work together. The amazing principle of what is shown to us, even through nature itself, that if something happens together, there's something powerful that happens. It's not a mystery according to the word of God. Mark chapter 6 and verse 7, he says, He called unto him the twelve, and he began to send them forth by two and two. He didn't even send out his disciples alone. He made sure he sent them together. <laughs> he commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey. Save a staff only. No script, no bread, no money in their purse. But be shod with sandals and, and not even to put on two coats. The only thing that mattered that they were going to be successful was not what they took, but that they went together. That's what mattered. Deuteronomy chapter 32 says, How should one chase a thousand? And two put 10,000 to flight. It makes no sense to us naturally that one person can put a thousand to flight. But when you join with somebody, that 1,000 is times by 10. And now 10,000. Hallelujah. Because you have gone together. Together. Let us stand. And if a house be divided against itself, it will fall. But let me tell you, if you stay together, don't allow yourself to get isolated. Don't allow yourself to get on the outside. Don't allow yourself to be alone. Make sure you're together. Uh. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12. If one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. One strand can be broken quite easily. Separately, they can be broken. But when you start to weave strands together, hear me tonight. 
when you start to weave yourself together with the family of God. A threefold cord is not easily broken. You'll be able to withstand a lot more together. Come on up, Cole. You looking after kids? Oh, come up here. An old, old kid song. Why don't you stand to your feet? Find someone close to you appropriately. Why don't we sing it? Oh, we used to sing it in Sunday school. Maybe we should bring back, you may be seated. Maybe we should bring back some of the old songs. <laughs> Maybe we should dig that one out of the archives and sing it on a Sunday morning uh, and allow each of us uh, to realize we've got to do this together. Too many people are trying to do things alone. See, together, two or more persons, a condition of unity, compactness, or coherence. And a house that's divided against itself cannot stand. But that means that the house that is unified together will stand. Jesus, he speaks the same, Matthew records the same story. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 25. And they're having, this, they're having this big back and forth about what's happening. And the Lord's argument runs, it runs through this, that the welfare of the kingdom, the city, or the family depends on the unity of being together. The focus was not on what the enemy could do. You can read the story. The focus was not on, on the enemy trying to come in to take the spoils. No, the focus was if we can stick together. Together. As God was laying into my heart a number of months ago, what would happen in 2020? I spoke to Dr. Littles. I knew his viewpoint. But I wanted to share with him my thought and what God had put into my spirit. And what a confirmation that he shared with me of, of what God would like to do in his church. I understand the necessity of departments, and department heads, and, and we, we've got all that. And my goal as pastor is not to eliminate departments, and it's not to eliminate depart, department heads. It's, it's not to do any of those things. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for all the work that you do. But in 2020, everything that we do, is going to be together. Together. We're not going off in separate groups. We're not going off and doing things separately. There's only one church, and we're in it together. We all have our strengths, 
And we all have our purpose. It is important for our kids, our young people, to spend time with our elders. It is important for our elders to spend time with our kids. It's important that every aspect of this church, what God has put together as the fabric, and He has woven it so beautifully that this church is, it is a, a, a tapestry of so many different ages and styles of people and, and, and different uh, cultures and people that have been in church for a short time and a long time and people who are from here and people who are not from here. All of those, those, all of those things make up the church. And I, I want us to focus that in 2020, we will be together. Every month, we'll have a theme of together. The month of January is together, we are healthy. You've seen it in our kingdom prayer this morning, that healthy Churches is what grows, and, and, and churches that grow are healthy, and we need to be healthy. Oh, yes, we, we, we have put in there to be healthy in body, but it's also to be healthy in spirit and in mind. Together, we are healthy. It's not healthy to be alone. I'm not talking about marriage. I'm not talking about having a significant other in your life. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about not being alone. That we are in this together. Someone that prays alongside of you. And someone who walks with you when it gets tough. And someone that, can, that you can talk to when you're lonely. And someone who can help you through a difficult time. and Someone who will stand with you when maybe family's not standing with you. And someone who will be with you in, in, in moments of crisis. And people that will be with you in times of maybe bad news and tragedy in your life. And the loss of a family member and... And, and things that happen that you're not necessarily planning for. And, and you didn't have it on your schedule. But we're in this together. And together we are healthy. I need you. And I need you. That's the truth. If it wasn't for you, there'd be no sense of me being here. I need you. We need each other. We are healthy together. Oh, February. Together. Together we love. Together we love. There's going to be, oh, I, I, I'm going to back up. Just leave that up, though. Uh, just so, you, so I don't forget this. I don't want to forget this. January the 25th. January the 25th. That's a Saturday. Saturday afternoon, we have the field house booked for our church. And we're going to go there Saturday afternoon, and we're going to have a good time. At the field house. That's the new building that's just been built behind uh, the Cineplex and back there. That great big, all different color building. We've got that set aside. We've got the field set aside. We've got rooms set aside for us to fellowship and play games. And we're we're, we're going to be healthy together. Got the walking track and we'll, 
do whatever anyone else wants to do. All kinds of things. We're going to do it together. We may even have a snack or two. I mean, when we get together, you've got to have a snack or two. We'll even try to make it healthy. We'll try to make it healthy. But we're going to do it together. Together we are healthy. How you doing, Sean? Are you able to follow me? Awesome. Together we're healthy. Amen. I need you to stop talking, please. Together we are healthy. In February, together we love. We're going to come together as a church, and we're putting care packages together. We're putting care packages together for people that are in need, uptown, downtown, whatever part of town that needs it. We're going to come together, and we're going to do it. We're going to do it together. We're going to put them together, together, and we're going to pass them out together. We're going to let the church do it together. Together we Love. Listen, if there's one thing that needs to be known about this church, is that it better be a loving church. It better be a church that loves the, the, uh, the, the less fortunate. And it better be a church that loves people who are on the street. And it better be a church that loves people who are not like us. It better be a church that loves. We're going to love together. We're going to do it together. It can't be just four or five people. It needs to be that the church loves together. Oh, we got all kinds of things that you can do. You won't have to do anything that's embarrassing to you. We got all kinds of personalities to do all kinds of things. That's why God put us together. Some people are not afraid to do certain things. Other people are more shy. That's all right. We're just going to do it together. Together. March together, we will pray. That doesn't mean you don't pray any other month of the year. But in March, we're going together. We're, we're we, together. We pray. Got some interesting things we're going to do that month. We're going to do our prayer Friday night prayer meeting at houses all through the city. People who are willing to let us bring ten or fifteen people to your house. Have a prayer meeting on Friday night. We're going to pray together. We all come in here and it's wonderful. And we all have our pew and we all get down and do our little thing and wait for the 50 minutes to get by and we go. But how about if we do a little bit of it together? How about we have a little bit of prayer together? How about we spend a little bit of time in each other's home and we pray together and we hold each other up together in prayer and we pray for our families and we pray for our street and we pray for the relatives of the people that are there and we pray for the needs that are represented. We pray together. Hallelujah. It's time for the church to do it together. It's time for us to do it together. Hallelujah. There's something powerful. I don't know. Everyone, anyone ever have a home prayer meeting at your house? There's something about it. There's something about it. Hallelujah. There's just something about it. We went six months before without a pastor in Kushpaquak. We had prayer meeting every night. We shifted it around to people's uh, different house every night for six months. Six months in a row we had prayer meeting every night. But I'll tell you what, there was something that happened uh, in those prayer meetings. There was something that changed. Uh, hallelujah. And no matter what the age was, uh, didn't matter. Uh, the time didn't matter. It didn't matter that it was even school night. Uh, hallelujah. We prayed together. Uh, hallelujah. It's time for us to pray together. Together we'll stand. April, together, we rejoice. We're going to rejoice together. Some interesting things that we will be sharing with you. May, together, we grow. We're going to grow together. And in June, together, we serve. Music, come. July, 
Together, we encourage. There's going to be some neat things that happen. I just, I just, oh, I'm so excited in my spirit. But when's the last time you got together with people you didn't even know? When's the last time you got together with people you never got together with before? So encouraging. So encouraging. Say, Pastor, oh yeah, seriously. It's going to be on your schedule. It's going to be on your schedule. Four, four different per- people or families that you get together with for coffee that month. And you never, ever got together with them before. Get your sign-up sheet. Start thinking it over in your mind. It's not hard for us to get together with people we know. What about people you've never had coffee with before? You learn so much about them. Together, we encourage. Together, August. Together, we focus. Going to have some neat things. Can't tell you it all tonight. September, together we give. It's a great giving month for our church. October, together we are thankful. November, together we stand. And December, together we celebrate. 2020, we're going to do it together. I'm expecting, I'm I'm expecting a unity of the Spirit. I'm expecting something to happen miraculously for your home, your life, your person, your, you as a person. I'm expecting for God to strengthen, lift you up, take you to realms that you've never been because we're going to do this together. Do you think you're better than a horse? Nobody? I'm getting a couple nods, but that's it. Nobody's. My goodness. Lord, don't let us be horses. Anyone better than a horse, Mom? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen. If two horses can haul four times as much because they've learned to work together. Can you imagine what the people of God can do? By December, if the Lord tarries, we're going to celebrate what He has done all year. We're going to celebrate together what God has done through our lives. Let us stand together. Man, I don't know if you're as weird as I am. I'm a really weird person. No, I, you all know that, yeah, I know. Let me, let, me, let me tell you this in closing. This is how weird I am. I've even thought about that if my wife and I ever got separated and we were in different places and they had all these women lined up And I was blindfolded. And I didn't know which one was mine. That we would have this secret handshake. You have no idea who's pastoring you. I would have this secret handshake and just how we hold hands and how my fingers are so much bigger than hers and there's 
there's a couple of her fingers that go between just one of mine, and it's not a normal. Uh, it's not normal at all. And how I would have no difficulty whatsoever knowing because over the past 30 years, it's always been the same way of us holding hands together. It wouldn't matter if I was blindfolded. It wouldn't matter how many thousands of women were there. I would be able to pick out the one because we've done it together. What a wonderful thing to be able to say about the church. We're healthy together. We love together. We pray together. We encourage together. We focus together. We're going to do it together. And we're going to end 2020 if the Lord tarries by celebrating what God has done with us together. Don't go home and think I'm absolutely crazy. Man, I don't know why I think such things. It's not that I'm alone a lot. Would you stand tonight? Oh, man, I didn't have that in my notes. What was I thinking? Is it true, honey? It is true. It's true. Oh, it's true. So true. I even told her that before. I could pick you out, honey. Nothing to do with your height. Wouldn't be able to see that. I'd be blindfolded. But man, we've held hands so many times together. Why don't we bind together with cords that can't be broken? Cords of love that can't be broken. Oh, we've got our differences. That'll never change. We've got our own personalities. Don't ever let that change. That's what makes it so unique. You've got your own thoughts, your own opinions. That's awesome. That's how God made you. But there's only one body of the church. And he put us all in it together. He used these words, compacted. Every joint supply. God, I pray for this church right now. I pray, God, the simple idea that you put into my spirit. But I believe it's going to have profound consequences. I believe, God, without a doubt, there will be profound step forward. Steps forward in people's lives. Families. Thank God that no one, no one would ever feel like they're trying to accomplish it alone. But rather, we're in this together. Together, we 